Oh, Michigan man Kirillo Alexandrov was held captive by Russian forces on accusations of being a U.S. spy and has now been reunited with his family after a rescue mission that included an 18-hour race across Ukraine. Officials with Project Dynamo learned about his story and rescued him, being the first known American victim and survivor of Russian war crimes. Both Kirillo and uh, co-founder and Project Dynamo, Brian Stern. Uh, join us now. Brian, uh, tell us about the rescue efforts. We'll get into a second some of the details, uh, but that couldn't have been easy. Uh, rescues are never easy. Right. They're, they're just not. If, if they were, they'd be called tourism. Yeah. So uh, rescues are always complicated. They're always difficult, even under the best of circumstances. It's a challenge. Project Dynamo started in response to the, to the uh, Afghanistan evacuation in August 2021. We're donor funded and we expanded into Ukraine as the buildup was starting. We got there about two and a half weeks before the war, built infrastructure, which allowed us to do things like the, like the Carrillo case. Really, tell us what happened. Where were you? What happened? And you were held uh, for how long? 37 days. 37 days. Mm -hmm. How did it come about? Well, I was uh, in my house in Kherson. Uh, Russians broke into my house. They kidnapped me, uh, threw me in a closet. They tortured me and uh, raped people who were close to me. Um, they did mock executions and uh, held me there for 37 days until Brian got me out. They held you at that place? I was in captivity 37 days. 37 days. Yeah. And your family was able to get away at that point? Uh, Brian got them out as well. You got them out. Yeah. So this was a rescue effort. Yeah. Um, what made you, how did you learn about his situation and how did you decide what steps to take? Uh, oddly enough, uh, Carrillo's mother, Gloria, saw us on Newsmax. And uh, uh, we, uh, you had covered us for something yep. that we had done. She saw us, reached out to us. We made contact with her and started the process. We were able to talk to Carrillo uh, a day or two before he was arrested. He was, he was behind enemy lines about 100 miles, 120 miles. So we had one day of communications, and then he was subsequently arrested. And then we started the process to, to figure out a, a creative, and creative way to, to get him out. And I'm sure you don't want to expose how that is, how that happened, because you may have to do it again. Uh, we've done uh, we've done a number of American citizens, including uh, Terry Gately, John Spohr, Robert Platt, number of guys that were held uh, that were behind enemy lines, either in captivity or just on the run. Um, this stuff is not um, it's not very tactical. It's more more sleight of hand and nuanced and manipulation and influence and some of those tactics. So it's, it's, it's three-dimensional chess, not checkers. Kirilla, what do people not understand about what's going on right now in Ukraine? I would say the amount of suffering that people are going through. People are starving. Civilians are being killed. It's just endless horror. And what Mr. Putin has tried to do is to almost represent this as uh, the Russian people are reuniting themselves with uh, uh, those in Ukraine that consider themselves Russian and that they are fighting for the great, great uh, loyal uh, Russians. Um, and your experience obviously shows that these are not honorable people. No, it's not liberation or anything like that. It's Tell us more about that. What, 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 what kinds of uh, things that did you see in your, your town and, and changes and things that these uh, Russians did? Well, there wasn't much cordial behavior. People were being raped and tortured and mock, ex mock executions, breaking into homes, breaking into stores, stealing food. Uh, nothing cordial or honorable at all. Were they taking the property at that point or trying to convince everyone to move out? They, they took my clothing, jewelry, they still have my passport, computer, phones, everything. Uh, how do you think the Ukrainian people are holding up against this? Because most of the world looks at what uh, folks like yourself have done, uh, has shown great courage and has allowed Ukraine to survive this long and push the Russians back. Well, Ukrainians have a very strong spirit, and I think they're going to go until the death. They'll go until death. And have you talked to other relatives there now to see whether there's progress being made on the Ukrainian side? I've spoke with some, as some I've lost contact with. I'm sorry, say again? Some I've lost contact with. Okay. Uh, and how do you read that? Well, it's up and down. Um, it's hard to say. I don't... I can't predict the future. 
What part of the country were you in? Uh, southeast, bordering Crimea. And that's the area that the Russians have been especially active? It's fully Russian now. Yeah. Um, do you have any hopes of ever going back there? Not right now. Yeah. Uh, it, it's important to understand from the Russian perspective, Kirillo is an escaped fugitive. He wasn't released. We took him. So he's still a charged He's still charged with 11 felony counts of espionage and a bunch of other things, so... In Russia. Which is now, which now owns his home. Yeah, I was going to so, say, this <laughs> is your home. So in your hometown, you're a fugitive yeah. to the Russians there. Mm -hmm. But do you consider Ukraine still your home? Yeah, yeah. Have you, do you plan on coming here? Do you have family here? I have family here, yes, of course. I and was you, born feel, here. you feel comfortable here? Do yes, you think you could build a new life? Absolutely. I've been given a second chance, so I have to. What would you like to do with that second chance? Uh, well, I'd like to first reflect on who I was before the war and yes. become a better person after. So um, I'm not entirely sure, but I do want to help people in suffering in any way that I can. Is there any message you would give people uh, um, about what's going on over there? Well, I, I don't think either Ukraine nor Russia are going to stop any of the suffering. It's just going to continue. People will starve. People will die. Um, the only person on the planet that can help is Brian. So, Gorilla, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. you sharing your story. I know it's very painful. If people need to get in touch w with your folks, Brian, how do they do it? Uh, our website, projectdynamo.org, we are donor funded. The story is dying and our donations are dying with it. We're working a number of cases just like Carrillo's uh, where there's Americans stuck. We need financial help and we need it badly and we need it now. Uh, projectdynamo.org, we're on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff, but the best way to help us is to donate by far. And just so people know, you, di you didn't ask me to ask you that. I, I just feel like there are a lot of people that may need help and I want them to be able to contact you. Brian, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Uh, Krilla, thank, thank you. Me. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you.